In our last lab, we discussed mass and what that means in terms of a substance particles. Now, mass is a physical property, which means that it is a way that we can describe matter. Mass is the physical property that describes how much matter is present in a given sample. We use kilograms to measure mass and determine the mass using a balance. Now that we have defined mass, we want to look at how mass might change under certain conditions. You can probably tell me that the law of conservation of mass states that mass cannot be created or destroyed. So what does that actually mean? If we lose some mass, then have we destroyed it? If our mass increases, have we created it? If we change our sample in some way, will the mass change? In this lab, we will do a series of six tests to see what happens to mass when we change something about a sample of matter. Be sure to start each part of the lab on a new page in your lab notebook. Part one will use steel wool and a balance. The question for this part of the lab is whether or not changing the shape of steel wool will change its mass. So we will start out with a piece of steel wool. Since we are looking for a change in mass, we will need to know the mass before we change this shape. This is known as our initial mass and is given the designation of m sub i. There are lots of ways to change the shape of steel wool. You can wad it up into a smaller ball, you can stretch it out into a thin string, or you can make it into a recognizable shape. It doesn't matter as long as the shape is different from what you started with. Again, since we are looking for a change in mass, we need to know the mass now that we have changed the shape. This is known as our final mass and is given the designation of m sub f. Along those same lines, you are actually changing the shape of the steel wool. Because you are changing that shape, this is the independent variable. So how do we find the change in mass? In science, we have a convention that allows us to find the change in pretty much anything by subtracting the final value by the initial value. So to find the change in mass, we take what we measured as the final mass and subtract what we measured as the initial mass. This is a little too wordy for most people doing math, so we can rewrite this using abbreviations. The change in mass is represented by a triangle, which is actually the Greek letter delta. So delta m represents the change in mass, which is equal to the final mass, minus the initial mass. And again, because the mass might vary if we change the shape, it is the dependent variable in our investigation. Part two of our lab is looking to see what happens to mass when we melt ice. Ice is simply solid water. So what we are really looking for here is what happens to mass when a substance changes its state of matter. You will need a 250 milliliter beaker, some ice, and a balance. The amount of ice doesn't matter, but the more you have, the longer it's going to take to melt. Immediately after getting your ice, you need to find the initial mass of that solid water in the beaker. And then wait, and wait and wait until the ice is completely melted, and then find the final mass of the liquid water. Now watching ice melt is really not a good use of time in the laboratory, so a good plan here would be to set this aside and continue on with the other parts of the lab. In part three, we are going to begin with two different substances and mix them together. In this case, we will be using 0.1 molar sodium carbonate and 0.1 molar calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate is a substance that is used in a lot of fertilizers, and sodium carbonate is commonly known as washing soda. Molar simply refers to how concentrated the mixtures are. The 0.1 indicates that they are really not very concentrated at all. This is a term we will define in a lot more detail later on in the year. But be aware that when you see an M after a number, it is indication of the concentration of that chemical. You will need two small test tubes and a small beaker to hold them upright. Fill one test tube about one-fourth full of sodium carbonate and the other test tube about one-fourth full of calcium nitrate. This is what you will need as the initial mass. Then mix those two liquids together. You should notice a change in the appearance of the liquids. If you look very closely, you will see that a very fine solid has formed. This is called a precipitate. 
This is what you should use as your final mass. When you have determined the final mass, pour out the waste product in the beaker labeled Part 3, located in the fume hood of the laboratory. For Part 4, you will need a good sized sample of steel wool, a balance, and a pair of tongs. The tongs are what you will use to hold the steel wool into the flame. We have two types in our lab. Some have a rubber coating on the ends. Do not use these. Find a pair that do not have the rubber coating. A burner will be set up at one of the lab tables, so you do not need to get your own. Be sure to find the mass of the steel wool before burning it. Then hold the sample in the flame for about half a minute. You will be able to see when it has really stopped burning. Let it cool before placing it on the balance to find the final mass. When you are finished, the burned steel wool can go in the trash. Part 5 looks at the change in mass when a substance is dissolved. Think about what is happening when sugar is added to the water. Is it still there? How do you know? You will need two small test tubes, a balance, some water, and sugar. Fill one of the test tubes about two-thirds full of water. Add about a pea-sized scoop of sugar to the other test tube. The total mass of this system is what you will record as your initial mass. Add the sugar to the water, swirl it around and let it dissolve, and then find the final mass. Part 6 is very similar to Part 5 in that we are adding something to water. You will probably notice right away that Alka-Seltzer behaves quite a bit differently than sugar when it is added to water. You will need one small beaker, a balance, some water, and part of an Alka-Seltzer tablet. Fill the beaker about half full of water. Find the mass of the tablet and the beaker of water to record as your initial mass. Add the Alka-Seltzer to the water and let it dissolve, and then find the final mass. When you have completed each part, record your change in mass on the board in the lab room. Also make sure that all of your equipment is clean and place it back in the cabinet where it was retrieved. So what can you do now so that you are ready to go when you walk through the door during class? This is always a really good question to ask. What can you do right now that will make your life easier tomorrow? Really, the only thing you need to write down in this lab is the data. Everything else you can put in there now. So for each part of this lab, you will need the title, the question, the independent and the dependent variables. Predict what you think is going to happen. What do you think is going to happen to the mass in each one of those sections? You really have three choices here. It can increase, it can decrease, or it can stay the same. Write a very short procedure, and go ahead and make out your data table so you don't have to do that during the lab.